Hi, this is Stormy, and uh, Stormy and I thought you'd like to see, meet him officially and see the lovely attire he's wearing. He's got his own little uh, sailor skimmer here, a little straw hat with a blue and white matching band to his blue and white striped blazer that you see here. And I don't know if you can see, got blue buttons on it. And here is his little button-down collar with a, a, a plaid, red plaid, red, blue plaid tie. Pretty fancy, don't you think? The lady who uh, designed and made all this apparel is our first guest today on To Tell the Truth, and let's meet her now. What is your name, please? My name is Mildred Pell. What is your name, please? My name is Mildred Pell. What is your name, please? My name is Mildred Pell. Only one of these ladies is the real Mildred Pell. The other two are imposters, and we'll try to fool this panel. Peggy Cass, Ray Bolger, Ann Sheridan, and Dick Sean on to Tell the Truth. <laughs> this portion of To Tell the Truth is brought to you by Kellogg's Cereals, the best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Here once again is your host on To Tell the Truth, Bud Collier. Thank you and welcome again to To Tell the Truth. Cute dog. Good afternoon, panel. Good afternoon. Wasn't he a cutie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty well behaved, too, when you realize that he had all that fancy duds on there. He was real good wearing them just, you know, like this is regular wear all the time. And that's, of course, a trick in the way these things are made, that they're comfortable and the dogs enjoy them. Now we'll play our next game in just a moment. But right now, let's listen to this word from Kellogg. Hi, this is Dennis James with a little reminder here that it's time again to collect free milk money from Kellogg's. It's easy to get your quarter. Send in two box tops from family-sized packages of these Kellogg cereals. Two box tops from Kellogg's Corn Flakes or Rice Krispies or Special K. Now send your box tops, the tops with the blue star, to Milk and Cereal, Box 812, Detroit, Michigan, 48232. I'm going to repeat that. It's Milk and Cereal, Box 812, Detroit, Michigan. And be sure to print your name and address plainly. Kellogg's Milk Money Offer ends October 31st and is limited to one 25-cent piece to a family. So how about it? Get your quarter, your free milk money from Kellogg. The address and details are on the packages, so send your box tops in soon. Don't put it off, though. Make sure you send them in as soon as you possibly can and get your free milk money, okay? Okay. Very well, panel. In front of you are today's envelopes, the contents of which you have never seen. So open up the one that has the number one on it and follow along with me. Red Pell, design clothes for dogs. It all started when I was a child and dressed my dogs the way other girls dressed their dolls. One day, a few years ago, I walked into a famous New York department store with two of my dogs dressed in raincoats. As soon as the buyer of dogs' apparel saw them, I was in business, designing and making all kinds of clothes for all types of dogs. They include floral print cocktail dresses, pajamas, black lace evening costumes, and even mink and Persian lamb coats. My prices range from $3 to $500 for a complete outfit. And for that kind of money, any dog can, shall I say, put on the dog. Signed, Mildred Pell. <laughs> so, panel, three ladies here, all claiming to be the same one, Mildred Pell, dog's clothing designer. Let's start this question with uh, Ray Bolger. Ray? Well, uh, Mildred Pell, number three. Uh, how... Uh, how does it feel to be a poodle cotillier? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and uh, do you get a lot of satisfaction mm. out of uh, uh, seeing uh, one of your costumes on a street? Oh, definitely. Are you the only one that's in that business, number three? As far as I know. Uh, uh, number two, uh, uh, do you manufacture for wholesale or do you just deal direct with the, the stores? Just directly with the, with the customer. With the customer? Yes, with the well, client. You... With the client. Uh, with a, a specific client. Now, do you go to a, a, a poodle uh, uh, shop where they fix up the poodles to get your customers, or do they recommend? Uh, how no, does it happen? I design them myself. Yes, I know, but, but how do you get your customers? <laughs> and Sharon. Uh, thank you, bud. Number one, you say here, as soon as the buyer of dog's apparel saw them, 
I was in business designing, making all kinds of clothes and so forth and so on. Uh, do you, do you uh, distribute to stores? Uh, no, not now. Everything is custom made with a particular customer. Well, why was the buyer interested? Did they send business to you? No, at the time, the buyer was interested. Oh, I see. And uh, when you were a child, did you make the clothes for your dolls, or did your mother make them? No, uh, some of them were made by other people, and uh, some were dolls' clothes, and others I made myself. Uh, number two, did you make your own dolls' clothes? Yes, I did. You never took sewing lessons? No. In order to make the dolls' set? No. Number one, uh, do boy dogs dress differently than girl dogs? Definitely. <laughs> you should know that. No, I shouldn't. I've never dressed a dog before. <laughs> definitely, definitely. They do. Definitely. Oh, I see. Uh, number two, uh, did anyone come in with a Doberman pincer to you to get dressed? Oh, yes. All types of dogs. I a Doberman pincer dress. <laughs> do you know if it was double-breasted or single? <laughs> <laughs> Number three, Multiple. what is the fabric most of the people prefer? Prefer. How now, Brown, young? Prefer. <laughs> prefer. Depends on the, uh, whether it's winter, summer. Number one, does a dog itch with wool? Uh, no. They scratch for other reasons. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, cat. Number two, are the dogs happy in these little outfits you make them? <laughs> yes, they love them, really. Uh, number three, are they really crazy about going to bed in those pajamas? As far as I know. <laughs> uh, number one, who is Nina Bears? Nina Bears. I don't think I've ever heard of her. Uh, number two, what street is your shop on? It's at uh, 34 East 61st Street. Thank you. Number three, where were you before you moved there? On 56th Street. Thank you. Uh, number one, who's Jane Camp? Never heard of her. Uh, and that's all the time we have. However, you do have time to vote, and that's what we ask you to do right now. And, of course, don't make any changes in a ballot once you have voted, and vote, of course, without any consultation. Voting should go now for number one, number two, or number three. And our team of challengers will, of course, receive the usual $100 for every incorrect vote. All ballots, Mark? Very well, we'll find out how our panelists voted in just a moment. But now, this word from new pink formula, Swan. It's new, Swan. What's new about Swan? New pink formula. Try it. Swan cuts hard grease without hard scrubbing. Without hard scrubbing? Sure. Take that greasy platter. Watch how Swan's longer-lasting suds cut hard grease without hard scrubbing. <gasps> Why, it's true. And it's mild. And it's pinker. It is new. New pink formula Swan. Swan really cuts hard grease without hard scrubbing. Which wash day detergent really cleans best? To find out, Lieber Brothers tested the seven leading detergents. The results? All out clean them all. All famous for low suds washer protection, cleans best too. All out clean the leading white detergent, out clean the leading blue detergent, out clean the leading tablet. And all's lower suds protect your washer against suds clog and damage. So get all. All protects best and cleans best. Very well, you've marked your ballots for the one you think is the real Mildred Pell. Peggy, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three, because Nina Bears also makes dog clothes. And number two, a a Jane Camp is a very famous dog handler. But most of all, this shop, Mildred Pell's, used to be on 56th because I used to walk my dog by there, but I wouldn't look in the window because I couldn't afford that jazz. But I know she moved away. So there, I think it's you, number three. <laughs> Ray Bolger. Uh, I voted for number one because I thought she looked very industrious and also... I thought that she looked like she just loved the poodles and liked to see them all dressed up in little fancy clothes. And <laughs> that's why she did it. And Sharon, what is your choice? But I took number one, too, merely because she looks like a very enterprising young lady. And I voted for number two because anyone who has enough guts to dress a Doberman pincer, I'm going to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> that's just sheer raw courage, yeah? All right, a widely split vote this time. Let's see what we do with it. As we have one for number three, one for number two, uh, one for number two, and two for number one. Let's go with that and see what we find as we learn which one of these ladies actually is the designer of canine apparel. Will the real Mildred Pell please stand up? <laughs> Very 
very good job of fooling. You did a good job there, ladies. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Virginia Exdahl, and I own and operate with my husband, Steve Exdahl, the Exdahl Real Estate Agency in Teaneck. <laughs> Pretty fun. Number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Patty Waters, and I'm a full-time writer, and I'm a part-time lobster fisherwoman in Cape Ann. <laughs> Well, in checking the score, ladies, you can be very happy. In fact, even a little smug. There were three incorrect votes, and that's three times $100. Easy to divide for $300, and we thank you very much for being with us. Goodbye, and God bless you. <laughs> Want to come see one of our broadcasts and sit right in our studio audience? We'd love to have you. Tickets is all you need, and simply write for those. We'll send them to you. Write to, to tell the truth, tickets. CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York 22, New York. And if you write that word tickets clearly on the envelope or the outside of the, the front of the card, uh, it'll get them to you much faster. And now let's meet our next team of challengers. One of these men was once a lawbreaker. Now he enforces the law for the United States government. What is your name, please? My name is Al Sharp. My name is Al Sharp. My name is Al Sharp. We'll play our next game in just a moment. Right after this word about Q-tips. Boy, bath time and mom's out. Must be a better way. Of course, Q-tips, the safety swab. Sterilized Q-tip swabs are baby soft, baby safe because Q-tip swabs and only Q-tip swabs give you this extra cushion at the tip with a special twist to hold it firmly on the stick. Even this firm. See, the tip holds firm. Q-tips, the safety swab. Lucky girl, no diaper rash. Her mommy uses Vaseline petroleum jelly. She applies a continuous film often. A moisture barrier against wet diaper irritation to help prevent diaper rash. Watch. We coat one strainer with baby lotion, the other with a continuous film of Vaseline petroleum jelly. Then add water. Baby lotion lets water through, but not Vaseline petroleum jelly. Applied as directed, its moisture barrier helps prevent diaper rash. Very well, open up your second envelopes and follow along as I read this copy. I, Al Sharp, was in my younger days a criminal. As a lawbreaker, my crimes included smuggling and selling counterfeit money. However, my career as a smuggler ended when I was asked to perform a dangerous mission for the U.S. government. When I succeeded in this assignment, they offered me a job as a customs officer, which I accepted. For more than 30 years, I uncovered and confiscated such contraband items as diamonds, narcotics, and ammunition, and I helped to smash several notorious smuggling rings. A biography of my exciting experiences entitled The Coin of Contraband has recently been published. Signed, Al Sharp. <laughs> we'll continue this game in just a moment. This portion of To Tell the Truth was brought to you by Kellogg's Cereals. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. This next portion of To Tell the Truth is brought to you by Clairol, creators of the exciting natural look in beauty. Finally, these three gentlemen all claim to be Al Sharp, who went from smuggler to United States customs man. And let's start this cross-examination with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you, bud. Number two, what department of the United States government do you work for? The Treasury Department. Uh, number three, um, what did you use to smuggle in when you were a smuggler? Well, they called it rum running. Oh, booze. <laughs> Number one, did you bring it in on boats or in trucks? At times. At times what? Both. Oh, both. Times both. Number three, did you get your liquor? Number two, mm -hmm. did you used to buy your supply, say, where did you used to buy your supply of liquor that you'd bring into the country? Where did I buy it? Yes. I didn't buy any liquor. Well, number three, what did you do, hijack it? No, I ran it in. Yes, but number one, where did you get the liquor to run in? I never ran any liquor. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, number three, where did you buy your liquor that you ran in? I picked it up in the ocean off Great South Bay, brought it through the inlet. 
Thank you. Number two, did, what do people put in the heels of their shoes that they smuggle through? Well, of course, they try for gems, basically, in this heel gag. Oh. Ray Bolger. Uh, number three, uh, what do they call uh, in the uh, terminology, the criminal terminology, selling counterfeit money? Mm, I wouldn't know that. Uh, number two, do you know? Uh, uh, number one, uh, uh, when, when this, uh, this counter, this uh, smuggling that you did, this liquor smuggling that you did, did you walk it in? I didn't smuggle liquor. <laughs> <laughs> number one, did you smuggle diamonds? I did not smuggle diamonds. Did you smuggle, number one? Yes. Well, we're through with you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, number three, uh, uh, when you uh, p passed this counterfeit money, uh, did, you, uh, did you do it in department stores or how? No, it was passed to the suppliers of the liquor out in the Atlantic. Oh, what a uh, pretty uh, sneaky uh, deal. Uh, and Sheridan. Wow. Uh, <laughs> number one, when you decided to go to work for the government, uh, did you destroy the plates or hand them over to a friend? I didn't understand you. I said, did you destroy the, the counterfeit plates? that you used. I don't know whether you did the counterfeiting, but you must have had some contact with the people who did. Did you help destroy the plates, or did you hand them over, leave them with friends? They were never destroyed. <clears throat> they were never destroyed. He's still using them. Oh, <laughs> uh, Number three, uh, what is the greatest haul on narcotics that you've made? The greatest haul? Uh -huh. Most probably around a million and a half. Number two, uh, how many diamonds? What's the greatest haul on diamonds you've made? For the government, of course. Well, there was a uh, one operation there which involved over 300 diamonds. And how much would that be worth? Have you any idea? Well, they were rough cut. Uh -huh. They're worth uh, in the neighborhood of about half a million dollars. Wow. Dick Sean. Oh. Number, number one, what is the value on the uh, products being uh, smuggled every year? What would you say the total amount of... Uh... That they get away with, you mean? No, for the, uh, that, how much would you say is smuggled into the country every year? I think no one knows that. I but I think you do. <laughs> I think you know a lot more than you're saying, sir. <laughs> number two, what is the product that's, uh, that is uh, smuggled in, mostly? The number one product. Is it uh, diamonds or dope or... It is gems. Gems? Yes. Diamonds. Diamonds are the, is the chief product. That's right. Are they uncut or the, uh, are they already uh, just the regular... No, usually the, the ready-cut ones. Uh -huh. Number three, do you work with the government? Oh, yes. And in, they know you and you know them? Yes. I see. Number one. Why, why are you so All cool? the time we have, it's time for you now to mark your ballot. Hot or cold, it doesn't matter. I just mark them at once. And no changes once you've marked them and no consultation while marking. Vote now for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? All right. All right, we'll find out how our panelists voted in just a moment. But you know that anywhere, anytime, Beautiful hair is important to a woman. Now's the time to do the things you like, to look the way you want to look. With gray hair so glamorous, seems to shine even in the dark. And your gray hair can shine like silver, feel like silk. With new Silk and Silver by Clairol, the hair color lotion that just washes in. Washes in new silvery beauty as it washes away yellow. Hairdressers love the way it turns mousy gray into glorious gray in minutes, so even in color. And just about once a month does it. New Silk and Silver comes in seven silvery shades, from whitest white to deepest silvery smoke. Won't rub off or come off, even in the darkest shades. Try it. Your family will be so proud. Your gray hair so glamorous seems to shine even in the dark. New Silk and Silver Hair Color Lotion. By Clairol, of course. All right, you've marked your ballots for the one you think is the real Al Sharf. Peggy, for whom did you mark your ballot? I voted for Mr. Sharf, number three. Now, number one was very evasive. I can only figure out he used to smuggle in smugglers because I don't know what else is the fun. But number three, I've read a lot of books about bootlegging and uh, not from personal experience, you understand, but they did used to lo load the booze in on Fire Island and the Great Peconic Bay, and he knew that, and I read The Great Gatsby, so I voted for three. <laughs> it's all about, all about that. Good sound reasoning. Ray Bolger, your vote. Well, I voted for number three because he looks so benign now. 
<laughs> it doesn't look like he would uh, smuggle in anything, and I think he'd have a, a marvelous uh, and talented attitude with, with anyone who did smuggle. You know, they wouldn't believe that he would, uh, would be on the job at all. <laughs> and also due to the fact that when I was brought up in show business around New York, uh, bootlegging and, and uh, all of that smuggling was a, was a pretty rampant thing, and uh, I know about those same places that you talked about because uh, <clears throat> I used to go out looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> and Sharon, your choice. But I, <coughs> pardon me, I voted for number one. He doesn't give out any information, and he'd be a safe character on either the side of the government or the smugglers, I think. <laughs> Dick Shaw. Uh, I did not vote for number two because he does not look like he would ever do anything dishonest. I did not vote for number one because I, th I think he's still on the other side of the law. <laughs> <laughs> and besides, he's funny enough to be an enemy. <laughs> I voted for number three because he looks like he's been around rum for years. <laughs> <laughs> well, the votes are in the right in and out. Let's find out now, shall we? Which one of these gentlemen went from a career of crime to working for the United States government. Will the real Al Sharp please stand up? <laughs> Hello. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I take that all back, sir. <laughs> sir you better I, have to I'm, I'm, Don't stop I, the other people in the Treasury Department. <laughs> Mr. Sharp, are you still active in law enforcement? Yes. Oh. I am presently the executive director of the Houston, Texas Crime Commission. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, nice to stay on the right side of you then. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? <laughs> uh, my name is Ted Bernstein, and I'm advertising director for Eagle Clothes. <laughs> Number three, you got most of the votes. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Francis Spahn, and I'm a salesman for U.S. Borax. The well, gentleman in checking the score, you should be very happy because there were three incorrect votes. And at one hundred dollars each, that three hundred dollars that comes our way to you, and may your way always be a happy one as you leave us with our thanks. Goodbye and God bless you. <laughs> we'll be right back after this word about mustard from Frenchy. Look what's up at number one Mustard Street. What's corned beef without it? Corny. What's pastrami without it? Absurd. What's the flavor that pleases on all kinds of cheeses? French's mustard. Spread the good word. What's baked ham without it? Half baked. A deviled egg without it? Catch the bird. For four generations, the choice of the nation. French's mustard. Spread the good word. And here's another good word from French's. With French's new cheese sauce mix, you never have to grate again. French's grates the cheese and blends the sauce for you. You just add milk and stir. In five minutes, you've got the smoothest, cheddariest sauce you can pour over macaroni and vegetables, too. Cheese sauce is just one of French's 14 Copper Kitchen sauce and gravy mixes. Good things to eat come from one mustard street. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for making it a bright one, panel. Goodbye, and I'll see you tomorrow. Look forward to that. Look forward to seeing you, too, tomorrow. In the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. You don't know who's watching. This portion of the Tell the Truth is brought to you by Clairo, creators of the exciting natural look in beauty. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production. This is Jack Clark of the shooting program of Free Recording. Stay tuned for CBS News with Douglas Edwards, which follows immediately.